This is a story about the birth of my third child and um, the drama that <laughs> um, came along with that um, and the joy. And I was 37 and maybe I was 36. I was 36. Um, I was, uh, had just become a registered licensed doula and I had become a doula because of my experiences with uh, my first two births and just the inability to have a natural birth without support. And so um, I didn't feel educated enough and so I became a doula. And a doula basically is someone who helps um, women give birth. Um, doula comes from the Greek doulos, which means servant. So we are women servants. And so we serve women before, during, and after childbirth. Um, so I was very prepared. We arrived and it, it, we were, I don't know, maybe 36 and a half weeks we arrived and I called my doctor and he was on vacation. So that was great. So I went to um, another doctor in his practice and she told me that I was dilated and she said that the baby was not turned exactly right, which I already knew from just feeling him in my belly and it being my third birth. Um, I could tell he wasn't turned exactly right. Um, and so we waited. Um, I had an appointment with my doctor the day he came back to work and um, I went into his office and he said, you're having this baby today. And I said, oh, well, why? Why do you say that? And he said, you're dilated four centimeters, which is, I mean, you get, you get, you get to go to the hospital when you're dilated four centimeters. And he said, so when can you be at the hospital? I said, well, I, I'm not going to the hospital right now. I'm not in labor. And he said, oh, well, you can be. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'll break your water. and You'll go into labor. And I said, oh, no, 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 I don't want my water broken. I want, you know, fully natural birth. I said, we talked about, we've talked about this for nine months. Like, and he said, well, you know, there's nothing unnatural about me breaking your water. He said, I can use my finger. That's natural. And I said, no, no, I'm not interested in that. So he said, well, you haven't thought about logistics. Well, he was very wise, and I did listen to him in that. And I said, okay, well, tell me what you think. He said, I think you're going to have this baby in the next 24 hours, and I think you're too far from the hospital. And I said, okay. So we planned to go and stay in a hotel not far from the hospital, and we were packing things up and getting ready. and. Um, I went and took a nap. And so I woke up and it was about 5 p.m. and I was gonna get up and make dinner and then we were gonna go to the hotel. And I started having contractions as soon as I woke up. Now, I had been having contractions for a couple of weeks on and off. And I thought, maybe he's right. Maybe we're gonna have a baby today. So, we, um, I didn't say anything to anybody. I just watched for about an hour, walking around, everything, nothing changed. Seemed like the day was had come. So called our friends there in Hong Kong and said, hey, can you, you know, can you take the kids tonight? And they said, yeah. So we got on the MTR, which is the subway, and um, stopped at the stop where they lived. And we hopped off and handed our children, our girls over and hopped back on the subway and rode to our stop and got to the hospital and it was all great. Um, my doula was there and we had our music low and um, I was in the middle of a contraction when my doctor arrived. And he, he walked in and he said, how are we doing? And um, my doula tried to quiet him down a little. She, and then he started, what's the plan? What about my time? And we were all like, what? <laughs> so my doula handled that very well, um, but he got me a little riled up, a little upset, and my labor stalled. And so the labor didn't come back. And my husband and my doula went to sleep. Um, one on the floor and one on a bench, and I proceeded to try everything in the book to get myself back into labor, and nothing worked. So about 4, 4 a.m. I went to sleep, and I slept till 7, and my doula said, you know, you could just go home. And I went, you can do that? She said, well, sure you can. So I said to my doctor, okay, I want to go home. And he said, you can't do that. And I said, why not? And he said, it's against my better judgment. And I said, well, I'm not in labor anymore. So they checked me and sure enough, 
I had gone back down to four centimeters, which I had been sitting at for a couple days. So I checked myself out of the hospital <laughs> and I went and found a new doctor um, because my doctor and I were not seeing eye to eye. And um, she was great. And, you know, I told her what had happened and she was okay with me just kind of doing my own thing. And um, the only thing she was concerned about was me going over my due date because I had gestational diabetes. Um, so I said, okay, no problem. I mean, obviously I'm three weeks before the due date. He's gonna be born within the next couple of days. So he wasn't. <laughs> so 40 weeks arrived and she started talking to me about induction. And I was just, oh, I did not wanna do that because I knew that he, he was not, his head was not in the right position. And so I was doing exercises every night and I'd go to bed and, and I'd wake up in the morning and I could feel him in the right position. And I'd get up and go to the bathroom about 5 a.m. every morning and I would feel him just flip back into his little hammock. Um, and I was like, ah. So this went on for several weeks. Well, at 40 weeks, you know, of course, she wanted me to have induction. So I went to church one Sunday, the Sunday that I was, the day after I was due, and there was a lady sitting behind me. She said, excuse me, do I know you? And I said, no, but, you know, I introduced myself. I said, you know me now. And she said, well, tell me about your pregnancy. And so I told her what was going on. And she had been an OB nurse in the States. And she said, I think you're right. I think you need to wait. I think you're okay. You know your body. And I was like, it's like an angel. <laughs> and so we worshiped and, and at the end of the service, she said, I wanna give you something. The Lord's told me to give you this. And she handed me some money. And it was the exact amount that we wanted to pay our doula. But our doula was doing it for free, um, but really didn't, really needed to be paid. And we didn't really have the money to give her. Um, and so we were really thankful. So we gave that money to our doula. Um, but it was just really awesome that she was sent to us. And so we carried on um, and then the next day came and still no labor, um, still had contractions, but nothing progressed and talked to my best friend and she's an OB and, and I was telling her the situation she already knew. And, and I said, you know, I'm a little bit stressed out. And she said, well, you know, I think that, you know, if it was one of my patients, I would just tell them to have an, a, c-section but since it's you I think you should go to 41 weeks and I was like okay this is the most no risk taking doctor I know <laughs> and she's telling me you can wait and I was like okay and we, we were praying I mean I've never prayed so hard and so diligently about one thing I mean just in and out. I mean it was constant constant and I just remember he would come and say, I feel like the Lord's telling us to wait. And I would look at scripture and I'd be reading all of it. It's just wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. And I'd pray and wait. And I just kept hearing wait. And so everything in the world was saying, go, do, do what you're supposed to do, have this baby. And I mean, he knows the desires of our heart. And I just kept thinking, Lord, <laughs> you know, I'm feeling a lot of pressure. Pregnant women feel a lot of pressure. And, um, to make sure their baby's safe. You know, I mean, that's what it boils down to. And so even though I knew I was okay and I knew I was healthy and I knew that my gestational diabetes was very much under control, um, I just was felt a lot of pressure. So my doctor finally convinced me that I needed to be induced. And so I agreed on my terms that I would go to the hospital if I could come at night so that I could do all of my exercises and get him into the right position so that when they induced, he would be in the right position and I would not get up and I would not let him get back in his little hammock. And so she agreed to that. So my mother-in-law was there and we packed all our bags and about 1130 that night, we headed towards the hospital and I cried the whole way there. And I just looked at my husband and I said, I'm gonna regret this for the rest of my life. And we arrived at the hospital and my knight in shining armor looks at the taxi driver and says, take us back home. <laughs> and I just looked at him and I said, thank you so much because I needed that 
I needed somebody else to make that decision for me. And so we went back home and at 6 a.m. we got a call from the doctor, where are you? <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, I need to wait one more day. I would have been 41 weeks the next day. And she said, well, there's no beds in the, available tomorrow. Hold on. She comes back, she goes, day after tomorrow, come up, you know, be here at 6 a.m. I was like, okay. So then she goes, now you got two extra days. I said, okay. Next day, wake up, same scenario. Wake up to contractions. I can feel he's in the right position. I get up, I go to the bathroom. My whole routine, been that way for three weeks. I go and lay back down and um, my water broke. And my contractions were 10 minutes apart. I said, go get daddy. So she went to get daddy and I could hear him saying, okay, get in the bed, get in the bed. Because he thought I was kicking her out. <laughs> And um, she wouldn't leave him alone. She was just um, two. She said, no, mommy needs you, mommy needs you. And he came in, I said, my water broke. Okay, we had our plan. I got in the shower and immediately the contractions just got really, really fast and like, it was for real. And um, he came in and I said, I think you should call an ambulance instead of a taxi, just in case. And we called our doula back and we said, come to the flat, don't go to the hospital because we're not quite sure how this is going to play out. So the police arrived first. When you called, you know, 911, the police arrived. <laughs> and they were a little bit freaked out to see a foreign woman um, in a long t-shirt, you know, kind of holding her pregnant self up on the sink in pain. And they, passports, passports, where's your passport? And we were like, I don't know where our passports are, you know. Then they proceeded to open up all the windows in February because we needed fresh air. And we were like, shut the windows, shut the windows. We're going to have a baby. We need to shut the windows. And then the ambulance showed up and they said, um, we can't take you to your hospital because your hospital's private. And we're a public service, we can only take you to the public hospital. And I went, <laughs> I did not come all the way down to go to the public hospital. <laughs> so I said, well, we're gonna have a baby right here. And so um, my husband said, get out of that bathroom right now. <laughs> so I got out of the bathroom and I climbed up on the bed and anybody who knows um, transition knows you can't really move at that point and I was going through transition so I just kind of froze and I just never moved again I just stayed in that position and um, my doula was there my mother-in-law was there my husband was there and I was you know giving directions <laughs> um, the infamous um, quote was protect the perineum <laughs> because my doctor had convinced me that um, if she didn't give me an episiotomy, I would tear. And I was, I didn't want that. I didn't want an episiotomy. I had lots of doula tricks to prevent that. And so I was, I was instructing my husband what to do to make sure none of that happened. And he, he was a champ. He was so awesome. And so we um, gave birth right there in the flat. Um, and I was in the zone, so I was totally unaware of the three ambulance drivers who had a front row seat to his birth. Um, but it was just incredible. And um, God really knows the desires of our heart because what I really wanted was a home birth. And I knew I would never have one because I lived in Asia and it's illegal to have that there. And um, we wouldn't, you know, intentionally do something that was against the law. Um, but you know, he just came so quickly. There was there was nothing we could do, and so um, there he was, born at home, and you know, he nursed immediately, and it was just perfect. And so, one of my favorite things is that the ambulance drivers took turns as though they needed to say something, and all three of them had you know something very special to say, and one said, "My." My wife is having a baby next month and I have learned a lot today. And <laughs> another said, we never knew that women could have babies without, you know, some, a doctor. And 
um, it was just really incredible and the Lord showed himself faithful and we waited on the Lord and he knew the desires of our heart and you know those desires are truly not everyone's desire but like I said I was OCD about having a natural birth and I had the most natural birth I could possibly have.